to Warhammer 40k in the Bible, where I take Warhammer 40k lore to help explain biblical lore. And today, we're going to be talking about the Orcs. Hopefully that was good enough for you, Chroma. Shout out to you, because I know you love the Orcs. So here we go. The Orcs, also called the Greenskins, are a savage, warlike, greenskin species of humanoids who possess um, physiological features of both animals and fungi who um, are spread across the Milky Way galaxy. They share many features with Warhammer Fantasy Orcs and were initially called Space Orcs and um, to distinguish them. So beforehand, right, they were created from the old ones and, you know, to battle the Catan and the Necrons and stuff, right? So were the Eldari and all that. And they were called the Quarks back then. But anyways, um, spread across the Milky Way. They share many features. Oh, I just read that. Okay, they are seen by their enemies, pretty much everyone else in the universe, as savage, violent, and crude, but they are most successful species in the whole galaxy. That's ironic, <laughs> coming from all these, because everyone is pretty much the same, but they are definitely more brutal, that's for sure. While killing each other and stuff and battle and all that, right? Um, um, outnumbering possibly every other intelligent star-faring species, even humanity with the very plausible exception of the Tyranids. Greenskins are one of the most dangerous alien races to plague the galaxy, numerous beyond belief, driven always to fight and conquer. The orcs threaten every single intelligent species of the galaxy. So their thing is war. They do it because they love war, right, to battle. Orcs are, prob are possibly the most warlike aliens in the 41st millennium, and their number is beyond counting. Amid constant, seething tides of battle and bloodshed, burgeoning orc stellar empires rise and fall. Because they're, they would just stop battling each other and unite, you know. It, it does happen. They do unite sometimes. But anyways. Mercifully, most are short-lived, soon destroying themselves in the maelstrom of violence and um, internecine conflict. Interne internecine conflict I don't know if I'm saying that right um, but should the orcs um, ever truly unify they would crush all their opposition so there you go orcs generate a potent psychic um, gestalt field that allows them to accomplish many feats of technological engineering that might otherwise seem impossible at the same time the power of the psychic field is directly proportional to the number of green skin or green skins present in the given location. The more orcs that gather, the more orcs are drawn to them, at the same time that the power and intelligence of the greenskin begins to grow with their numbers. The orcs' unquenchable thirst for battle has always proved their downfall. Historically, the orc tribes have spent much of their time fighting amongst themselves, waging brutal wars with only the strongest surviving. On occasion, an orc leader will emerge who is mighty enough to defeat his rivals and unite the warring tribes. His success draws other tribes to him, and soon a great walk, and we'll talk about that at the end, is underway. Partly a migration, partly a holy war that can exterminate the populations of the entire star systems. So, let's go ahead and go to the origins here. The orcs are biological engineered species created more than 60 million Terran years ago as, wa as a warrior race originally called the Krork by the long-vanished reptilian alien species known as the Old Ones, whom the orcs referred to as the Brain Boys. <laughs> the ancient Krork were known to possess more advanced technology than that is present of the, oh my goodness, technology than that is present green skin race, and to, uh, to be on average larger, in some cases standing as tall as 12 meters. We're going to get into this with the biblical side here. The orcs were created by the Brain Boys to fight the Necrons and their Catan masters in the great interstellar conflict, the War in Heaven, that shattered the galactic civilizations of the Old Ones that um, existed prior to the rise of Eldari. 
I, I guess I should have just read. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, orcs are the genetically engineered to be muscular, aggressive, and none too bright. Their technology is maintained by a cast of odd boys who possess genetically implanted dispositions and technical knowledge that grant them the unusual skill to maintain and developing technology. So, now we're going to get into the biblical side here. I like to do Warhammer, the Bible, and back to Warhammer again. So, Joel 1, 6-7 For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and had the cheek teeth of a great lion. He had laid my vine, wa er, yeah, vine wastes, and barked my fig tree. Means debarked it and stuff, right? <laughs> he hath made it clean and bare, cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Sounds a whole lot like orcs, doesn't it? I want to show you this. Lion's teeth. So check that out. Oh, that's a, here we go, a better picture. So you got these teeth right here, right? Then you got the cheek teeth. Here's a good, ah, uh, maybe not. I take that back. There you go, there's a good one. Interesting. Bet you didn't think they were in the Bible, huh? So, let's move on. Ezekiel 39, 1-6. Therefore the Son of Man prophesy against Gog. Now this guy, he's not a God per se, but he is a Nephilim. And one that shows up in the end times as well, by the way. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and I will turn thee back so when you see prince it's like almost like a uh, the son of the god or the you know the Nephilim that's in charge of a um, place right anyways and I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee and I will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel and I will smite thy bow out of the left hand, and I will cause thine arrows to fall at thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, though thou and all thy bands, this is important right here, right, the hordes, and the people that is with thee, I will give thee unto ravenous birds of every sort, and the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt um, fall upon the field, the uh, Oh, yeah, and I will send fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. That's interesting there. And they shall know what I, or that I am the Lord. So let's move on. Joshua 11, 3-4. And to the Canaanite, and to the east and the west, and the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite mountains, and the Hivite under Hermon. So Hermon, we're going to get into this means mountain of the oath okay in the land of mispah and they went out they and all their hosts with them much people so these are all nephilim tribes here even the canaanites became corrupted okay and they went out and their hosts with them much people even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude with horses and chariots very many Sounds a whole lot like orcs and stuff, right? I'm sure orcs were part of this. Now, is it, we're going to get into some North mythology here. Okay, Berserker in North mythology were a mighty combatant heroes who played a great part in the Scandinavian legends. Starkadur, a giant with 12 hands. In Hinduism, we have Shiva... Right, with multiple arms and hands and stuff like that. So there's two. And there's many more throughout all the world. So that's something to think about. Um, married Alfhide, um, surnamed the All Beautiful. Her son, Argrim, was the first to receive the name of Berserk without armor. 
because being of supernatural strength, right, in Genesis 6, it says men of renown, right? Basically superheroes. Okay, su with supernatural strength, he always went to battle without any armor. His fury made up for the absence of it. He always went to battle with the... Oh, sorry. He, yeah, always went to battle without any armor. His fury made up... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, sorry, guys. Um, he killed King Swaferlam, married the daughter of the murdered king, and became the father of twelve sons, all of whom had the same fury in battle as their father. They also received the name of Berserker, or Berserker... Uh, Barzerker or Berserk. Okay. The inherited fury sometimes reached such dimensions, ready, that they would slay their own men, not recognizing them through the madness. Not necessarily the same as the orcs, but interesting. The gods employed them in the most fierce and bloody contests. They were even more feared than the trolls, Berg or Bergrizen, the gnomon, and other dreaded spirits. They would yell and bite with their teeth like wolves often cutting into swords and shields of their enemies and demolishing everything within their hands their downfall was brought by their own madness one of them Hornart, um, desired to marry the daughter of the swedish king zegbug <laughs> sounds like orc names doesn't it <laughs> anyways um, and asked his brothers to help them battle for her but the swedish army was so strong that the fury of the berserker gave out before one part of the army had been slain and thus the other part of the army was victorious and slew every one of the berserker now we're going to get into the book of enoch here so this right here is basically genesis 6 you can go read it if you want to this is the first book of enoch and it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied um, that in those days were born, oh my goodness, children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, the watchers, saw and lusted after them. In Genesis 6, they're called the sons of God here. Okay, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And Samyaza, who was their leader, said to them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. They knew what they were doing, right? So they knew what was going on. And they all answered him and said, Let us swear an oath. That's why Mount, Mount Hermon means the Mount of the Oath. And all bind ourselves in mutual implications, not to abandon this plan, but do this thing, and then swear all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the mount, or the summit of Mount Hermon. Okay. So, and all together with them took themselves wives, and each chose for himself one and um, began to go into them and defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots, drugs, basically, and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and bare great giants, whose the height was, was 3,000 L's, who consumed all the acquisitions of men and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. This is why the flood happened, guys. This is why the flood happened. And almost every culture around the world has a worldwide flood story that's synonymous with giants. But anyways. Man, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devour mankind. They began to sin against the birds, the beasts, the reptiles, and the fish, and devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. So now, uh-oh. 
do 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 do. I had it highlighted, darn it. Just want to show you the. Okay. Where is it? I had it highlighted, man. Right from now, the Z's went done and taught the originals. Where is it? Born in giants and the whole earth. They filled with unrighteousness. No. Maybe it was this one. Let's see here. Yeah, okay, here it is. So. This is the Clash of the Titans in Greek mythology right here. Ready? Send, um, so, proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication. He's talking about the children of the Watchers. And destroy the children of, you know, the children of the Watchers from amongst men. Send them one against, ah, Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. Sounds like that Scandinavian thing, right? Story there. For the length of days shall they not have. And this is the Clash of the Titans. Right? And then this. Scandinavian, you know, the Berserkers, right? There's three different worlds, you know, world views that have kind of the same thing going on, right? This is something we need to start looking into, <laughs> right? I don't say this stuff just to be fanciful, right? There's evidence for this stuff. But anyways, so now you guys got the story of what's going on and why the flood happened. It wasn't just because of sin right i mean if that's the case we might as well put on raincoats <laughs> but anyways now let's get into the wog the wog is the name given by the orcs themselves to the massive military campaigns they peri periodically unleash on the galaxy as part of their eternal desire to seek out combat and war the term also applies to the key concept of orc culture around which the entire greenskin society, um, if it can be called that, revolves. Um, barbaric and savage, the greenskins spread across the galaxy like a viridian stain. They plagued the battlefields of the 41st millennium in great numbers, overrunning any who stand before them in the torrent of bloodshed and usually mindless violence. An orc wog is war on the apocalyptic scale. Orcs beyond um, counting swarm from one world to the next. Whole civilizations are exterminated, and defenders' armies laid to waste as the orcs plow over onward in the unstoppable tide. Right? Like this. <laughs> He hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean and bare, and cast it away. The branches of it are made white. Right? Okay. Orcs need battle just as humans need food and drink. Due to their warlike nature, they constantly fight against themselves, or launch um, piratical raids upon nearby enemies one of these days i'll learn how to speak english okay such conflicts tend to be small scale or localized they never really develop beyond random outbursts of violence and looting um, however orc populations can reach a critical mass that leads to the full-scale planetary migration this is known as wog a crusade of pure aggression that crashes through star systems in an orgy of violence. Orc behaviors dominated by the Wog, which also is the name given to the gestalt psychic field 
the greenskins generate that affects the orc psyche, which allows orcs to instinctively recognize who is bigger, and therefore who is in charge. Sense might, um, sense might makes right an orc society. All orcs generate this field, and it grows stronger as the orcs enjoy themselves generally while fighting, and as more of them congregate together in one geographical area. The WOG helps give momentum to the orcs' planetary assault campaigns, which are also known as WOGs. The orcs like to call a lot of things WOGs. Okay, um, such a wog is cross between a holy crusade and a pub brawl. <laughs> That's the truth, huh? Um, with a bit of genocide thrown in for good measure. Um, thousands of orcs will gather together, drawn to the power of the single dominant orc called a war boss or a war lord. If the wog is particularly massive, who is bigger and more intelligent than the orcs around him, then the orcs will set off and find an enemy to fight and defeat. And we're going to go ahead and end it there, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. And you guys have a wonderful day.